Hey, good afternoon, everybody. I want to welcome one and all to our event today. This is our Q2 Ernie sneak preview session. You got John Hopkins here. We're streaming live on YouTube, just like we do three days a week for our Trading Places live show. And of course, if you like what you see, love for you to subscribe to the channel and like the videos. It'd be great. Tonight, we're going to focus on uh, this uh, earning season that is about to really explode. Just tons of, of um, companies getting ready to report. Before we do that, I want to welcome all of our existing Earnings Beats members, including all of you who are on trial and regular subscribers. We've got a lot of people who subscribe to our Earnings Beats Digest. If you're in here tonight, we welcome you as well. Great to have all of you with us. Like all of our shows, tonight's event will be recorded. If for some reason you're unable to stick around for the entire event, no sweat. We'll make sure that you get a copy of the a recording so you can listen to it at your leisure. It's a really busy week for us um, the next week, just a load of stuff going on. In addition to tonight's event, tomorrow at five o'clock, we've got our Options Max Payne webinar, just one of my favorite events of the month. I found it personally to be very profitable. And this is where Tom's going to get into. Uh, market direction, uh, the major um, ETFs like Spider and Qs, and some individual stocks that could make significant moves over the next you know week to ten days, based upon the calls and puts that are being traded right now. So that happens to be a members only event, but you can also jump in on that if you uh, become a trial subscriber. So that's going to be a great event tomorrow. Then Wednesday, we've got our ETF draft. And this is where Tom is going to unveil the uh, ETFs and the stocks that are part of the ETF. We had a great quarter this last quarter, also a members-only event. And then next Monday, it'll be a follow-up to tonight's event. So tonight's a sneak preview of the members-only event that will occur next Monday, where Tom really gets into results to date of earnings and companies that could have major moves uh, into the earnings reports over the next week or two. So tonight's in a free event for everybody. Welcome you all. Uh, those events that I just mentioned. Oh, I forgot also. Um, a Wednesday, we've got our live trading room, something we, that just started. That's 10 a.m. Eastern, also for members. There's not a better time to take out a trial to see us in action over the next week with all these events going on. So just go to earningsbeats.com, sign up for a 30-day free trial. You're going to love what is presented over the next week or so. Okay, Tom, I had a lot to cover there, so I um, want to make sure you're in the house here. I am in the house. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. I got tired just reeling it all off, let alone having to actually conduct the webinars. <laughs> yeah, we got a lot going on, um, but that's what we do at Earnings Beats. Uh, we get through here into earnings season. Got so much going on with earnings. We got the portfolios that we look at and you know, a lot of the portfolios earnings, or excuse me, the uh, stock portfolios, which we next month, obviously based more on earnings than uh, the ETF portfolio, but the ETF portfolio is based on momentum and where the money's flowing, which is a lot, um, you know, it is determined quite a bit by earnings and earnings expectations and so forth. So, uh, but this is our season and we're starting to get into it now, just starting to, to get some earnings reports in for the second quarter. So far, so good in terms of the earnings. And so uh, got a lot of good stuff to cover tonight, I think. Hey, Tom. I just want to check, is your mic plugged in? You're sounding a little bit distant. Oh, yes, I am. <laughs> uh, that's probably a lot better. Yeah. <laughs> you, you can thank Aaron for cluing me in on that. But, uh, yeah, it's much better. Yeah, I, um, I have, uh, I've got a new setup. So my son Tyler came down and 
got me all set up a few weeks ago um, when we started doing uh, some of the video, uh, live video, which I guess I could do. Um, let's see. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, everybody. And I so mentioned, you, by the way, we're live streaming this, and which is what you do with your trading place live now. Yes. Yep. Um, but you can see this mic and the mic, actually, I'm going to show you where it was. <laughs> okay. So I had forgotten to move it down. So I'm used to using my headset, which I obviously don't need. Yeah. Um, and so I just hadn't pulled the mic down, the live mic. So uh, hopefully that should be better for everybody. All right, I'm going to let you go ahead and take it away. All right, sounds good. Um, we've got a lot to do, a lot of webinars, like John said, coming up, a lot of things going on at Earnings Beats. Um, one thing that I am planning to do for everyone tonight is uh, show you an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, of course, I love spreadsheets, and uh, I love to track data. And I've got you know what I think is really interesting, because I've been doing some research, looking at the um, earnings uh, that we talked about last quarter. So when we did the sneak preview last quarter, of course, this is just a preview to our actual earnings analysis when we get into a lot more companies next week. And so it's really important to go back and take a look at what we did last quarter to see what we could learn from that. And I think some of this information is just uh, really kind of uh, crazy, but uh, I'll let you decide when you take a look at it. Um, the other thing I want to mention, too, is when we do these, when I do a lot of research and I put it into Excel, um, because of the timing and I put so much time into this um, uh, into this analysis and so forth, we do uh, allow our annual members a copy of the Excel spreadsheet. So that's downloadable, which you can just, if you're an Excel wizard and you like some of the information that we pull into these files and you want to be able to manipulate it and do whatever it is you want to do with it, um, you can do that um, by taking our Excel file and then uh, having at it, whatever you want to do. But because, again, we do put so much time and effort into this, we do require uh, that you have an annual membership with us to download. But this, when I go over this Excel spreadsheet in a bit, um, you will, uh, I think you might be as almost as stunned as I was. Maybe not. I guess we'll find out. But anyway, some good information coming up. So just wanted to go through the agenda with you real quick. We're going to talk about those earnings. I'm going to start with that spreadsheet here in just a minute. And then we'll get into uh, Q2 earnings, what we've seen that's been good and bad so far. Of course, not a whole lot of earnings are out, so I don't have a whole lot of stocks to share there. But I will go over the ones that I've seen that I think have been come in pretty good and uh, might present some opportunities for us down the road. Same uh, with the ones that are bad, maybe some to avoid uh, down the road. And then uh, we'll take a look at the sneak peek of the earnings ahead over the next week and just pull up some of them that have been showing some really nice uh, relative strength and some which have not. And I think you'll see the importance of that when I go over the Excel spreadsheet and what we did last quarter. So let's go ahead and start with that Excel spreadsheet. So just give me one second to uh, get this going. Uh, almost ready. Okay. All right. Um, actually, I grabbed the wrong one. Oh, one second. There we go. All right. So you should now have up this earnings event analysis. So let me explain what I did last quarter. Um, yeah. Not showing. Oh, it's not showing? Well, maybe I never hit the share screen. That's probably what it was. Hold on one second. Thanks for watching, though. So I didn't talk forever on it. Yep, it was very simple. I did not share my screen yet.
All right, so let me uh, share. All right, so you should have this Excel spreadsheet up now. Yep, good. Um, and let me, I'll try to make it, this might be a little hard for everybody to see. Let's just make it a little bit bigger. Hopefully that'll come across. Can you see that okay on your screen, John? It's come across pretty clear. Yeah, it's, it's fine. Okay, good. All right, so what I did last quarter is, um, and this was not in the sneak preview, this was the actual earnings, the Q1 earnings uh, event that we did for members only. And so what I did is I went ahead and I looked at the next week's worth of earnings, every company that was going to be reporting. So it actually ran from April 25th to the 29th or 28th, I believe. So it was like, um, actually, it may, may, may have been the 24th through the 28th. Maybe there was nothing on the 24th I liked. But I think it was that week that I was looking ahead. And what I did is I told members, okay, these are the stocks, GE, PHM, THC, LTH, NVS, and so forth. These are the stocks that looked like they had really solid relative strength. These were companies that Wall Street appeared to be accumulating going into earnings reports. So as a result, what I always tell folks is that when a company's showing nice relative strength, what I expect are solid revenues and solid earnings per share. I mean, I, I expect companies to report good numbers. Why? Because Wall Street has, goes out and they visit these companies and they decide, okay, is GE looking good relative to Ford or maybe to Tesla or Rivian or whatever? And so they make their decision on, they, you know, they go back to their office after they talk to these companies and they're like, okay, we're going to start accumulating a position in GE. And the way you see that accumulation is through relative strength. If big money starts pour, you know, putting their resources into stocks, you should see it in terms of relative strength. So we kind of work, you know, since we don't have those, the ability of, of uh, analyzing those meetings and going in and being part of these meetings between Wall Street and these management teams at each of the firms, we simply use what we see on the charts to help us. And when I talk about helping us, I'm talking about relative strength. Relative strength is such an important component of technical analysis. If you're not using it, you absolutely should. There are some things I'll say, okay, if it's your preference, you know, I might use the PPO. You want to use the MACD, great. You want to maybe use the RSI as your moment. Okay, whatever. You know, you can have your own personal preferences. When it comes to relative strength, everybody should use it. There sh it should not be missing on your chart. If it is, I think you're really doing yourself a disservice in terms of trading. So anyhow, what I do is I go ahead, I look at all the upcoming uh, companies that I'll be reporting over the next week. And then I make a list of those that I expect positive surprises based on their relative strength and how they're trading relative to their peers and how their peers are trading relative to the S&P 500. We want to get leading stocks within leading industry groups for the most part, but we essentially, we especially want leading stocks. I mean, if you've got a choice of any stock in an industry group, hopefully you would want the ones that are performing better. I mean, you know, maybe if you're a, uh, you know, you try to bottom fish. Good luck. That's not really my style. I'm more of a much more of a momentum trader. I want to see what's working. I want to have my money working for me. I don't want to get in, involved in a stock and wait three years for the market to maybe recognize value in the company. That's just not my style. So we listed all these companies as positive companies going into earnings. And then if you go down here to the bottom, you'll see these are the negative uh, companies. And actually, I've got a, uh, I've got all these companies. This is actually on a different spreadsheet, but pretty much the same. I'll show you the difference here in one second. I just realized that we were. All right. Just trying to get this one bigger too. Make sure everybody can see it. Okay. So here was the positives. This, this was the earnings date. Now, what you'll see on, you know, that's why this is a little bit different than the other one. It's just in different order. I've sorted it. The ones I was just showing you were sorted. These are unsorted. So the first day that I looked at were companies that, had, that reported either April 24th after the market closed or April 25th before the market opened. And the reason I lumped those together is because both of those dates whether you report after the bell one day or before the bell the next day, 
the close and the open after those reports or before those reports are going to be the same. The dates are going to be the same. If you reported on 425 before the market opens, then your gap, you know, your reaction to earnings is going to be on 425. Well, if you reported 424 after the market closes, your reaction is also going to be on 425. So I tried to get them grouped together so that the after the market close and the next day before the market open are put together. And so that's why these earnings dates might be slightly different, 424, 425, but it's because one's after the market closed, the other's before the market opens. The next day would be 425 after the market closes or 426 before the market opens. Next day would be 426 after the market and so forth, okay? So that's how it was set up. So I've got all the positives by trading day, and then I had all the negatives down here below by trading day. And then I went through and actually did the, you know, I, I went back and checked, okay, how did the actual revenues versus the estimate come in? What about earnings? Did they beat? Did they not beat? And I did this for every company. And then I took the earnings reaction. So I took the close prior to the earnings being released. So in the case of GE, they reported on 425 before the market opened. That means that 424 was the prior close, right? All of these would have been 424s because they reported either after the bell on 424 or before the bell on 425. And then I got the open on the day they actually, you know, the first open after they reported and the close that day. And then I got the price one week after the, that uh, close after earnings, and then two weeks later. And so all I'm doing is just seeing which ones beat, which ones missed, and then I'm calculating the percentage. So this is the opening gap. This is what happened. Prior close was 100. It opened up at 101.80. That means the opening gap went up 1.8%. That was an easy one because it closed right at 100. It's easy to do the math. The next day close, we went from 100 down to 98.29. That was down $1.71, which is a loss of 1.71%. And then I calculated this AD line or the, the AD, which is the actual percentage from the open to the close. So I went down $3 or the GE went down $3.51. And that was 3.45% of 101.80. So you opened here, you went down 351. You do the math, that's 3.45%. Then I went over and said, okay, what's the five-day return? What's the 10-day return on each one of these stocks? Um, and then this was whether or not the uh, gap was higher or lower. And then this was whether or not we went higher or lower during the day. So this was the AD. One means we went higher. Zero means we went lower on these. And all I'm doing is just adding these up at the end just to see what the totals are. All right. Um, so that's in a nutshell how this spreadsheet was put together. And then I spent a lot of time today going back because I hadn't looked at this. But before we do this quarter's reports, I wanted to see what the results were for last quarter. So I'd been working on this spreadsheet pretty much all day today. Um, getting this up to date for you so that we could go over the numbers. I wanted to show you how important relative strength is when you're looking at earnings reports. Now, when you look at the relative strength, there is a little bit of, um, you know, it's somewhat subjective, right? Um, because I might look at something, I might say, well, you know, it's starting to trend higher. The relative strength is starting to improve. I'm going to include this as a positive. Someone else might look at it and say, yeah, but it's still down from where it was three months ago. You know, I'm not very uh, comfortable with this being strong relative strength. So there could be, you know, if you looked at it and I looked at it, we might come up with different opinions on what the relative strength looks like. Some of them, there'll be no doubt. You know, they're just going up relative to their peers and their peers are strong. And it's like a no brainer that, hey, this is a great looking uh, chart in terms of relative strength. But anyway, I went through. And for each of the five days, I laid out all the stocks that I thought would have positive surprises. Now, when you look at the actual versus estimates over here, if it's green, then they beat. 
the actual revenue beat the the estimate and the actual EPS beat the estimated EPS. If they're red, then they missed. All right, pretty simple. Now, some of them were kind of mixed. Like this one missed on revenues, ENVA missed on revenues, but beat on earnings. So that's all important when I show you the next, um, when I go into the next tab, because that's where I've sorted everything. So I just want you to know how all this is laid out before we take a look at the actual results. And what I did down here is I went back and I just manually calculated, there were 65 companies that I looked at. These were 65 companies that three months ago, we told everybody in our Q1 earnings event, these are the 65 companies that I like over the next five days. And if you go down here under the negative ones, there were 59 that I didn't like. All right, and we'll see the results to those. But of the 65 I liked, 49 of them beat revenues. 49 beat revenues, 16 missed revenues. Earnings per share of these 65, 51 of them beat their earnings estimate. 14 missed. So not 100%, but pretty strong. I mean, percentage is pretty strong of companies that beat both revenues or beat revenues and or earnings per share. All right. Now, how many of these 65 beat both? Beat on the top line revenues, also beat on the bottom line earnings. 43 of the 65. How many missed on both? Eight. Pretty strong percentage. When you have solid relative strength, there's a pretty good chance that you're going to beat. you got a much better chance beating on both top and bottom lines than missing on both top and bottom lines. Now I'm going to go down to the negatives. So I, I did the same thing. All the green, red, it all means the same. All the calculations over to the right, everything done the same. Down here at the bottom, though, I looked at how many of these companies, there were 59 of them, how many of them beat revenues? 34, 25 missed. And then when I looked at earnings per share, 34 beat, 24 missed, one matched. And when I looked to see, okay, how many of these 59 companies beat on top and bottom line, 23 beat on top and bottom line, 13 missed on top and bottom line. I want you to look at this 23 versus 13 relationship. Because you still had the majority, you know, there's still a better chance you're going to beat both than miss both. both. But take a look at that versus up here where I had 43 and 8. Five times as many companies came in and beat both top and bottom line versus missing both top and bottom line more than five times. Here, it was less than two times. So you can already see based on the actual results that if a company has better relative strength, it has a better chance of beating. And that's what I've talked about for years. And I've just now started to do work to actually prove it. But to me, this is proof. These were companies that I looked at and you could go back and listen to our, our Q1 earnings from last time and listen in before any of these earnings came out. These were the, you know, I gave 65 positive, 59 negative. And you can see the results. There's, they're much more geared toward beating if they have strong relative strength. Okay, so that's how this thing, this was laid out. Now, what I did is I took this entire spreadsheet and I copied it over into this spreadsheet. This is the one I was showing you to start, but I put it all over in this area. And the only thing I did different is I sorted. So now I have all the beats at the top. All the ones that beat both top and bottom line are all put together in a group. And so you can see the date, the earnings dates, we're kind of all over the place here. But these were the ones that beat on top and bottom line. Then I broke out the ones that were mixed. 
they either missed on revenues and beat on earnings or they beat on earnings and missed on revenues. But all of these are mixed reports. And then all these at the bottom, these were the eight. Remember I said there were 43 that beat and eight missed on both top and bottom. Here were the eight companies that missed. I did the same thing down under the negatives. I put all the ones that beat top and bottom line together. Then I put the ones that had mixed results and then the ones that missed both top and bottom here. This was a match, which in my mind, they didn't beat. So I put that down here with the ones that had missed. And then I did averages. And I want you to take a look at the averages when we move over. And let me see, I'm going to go ahead and freeze the panes here so you can, so as I scroll down, you'll be able to still see what's going on up here at the top. But I'm going to go down here to the averages. So the group that I thought was going to report strongly because they had really good relative strength, these were the ones within that group that beat top and bottom line. The average gain on the open was 2.9%, and the average gain on the next day's close was 3.53%. And the average move during the day from opening gap to the, to the close, the average was 0.48% gain. If we move down to the ones that were mixed, the opening gap was actually averaging down 1.47. The next day's close averaged down 1.46. And the AD, the actual intraday move from open to finish, averaged going down a quarter percent. And then if we look at the ones that were that missed, you can see they continue to be a little bit worse, minus 2.19% minus 2.59% for the next day close. And then throughout the day from the open to the close, there was a minus 0.41% uh, move. Now, those were all the ones that I had said I liked going into earnings, right? Now, let's take a look at the same groupings within the ones I didn't like. So now we're going to move to the negatives. And on the negatives, we're going to take the ones that beat on top and bottom line, and look at this. So even though they both they beat on top and bottom line, the average opening gap was still down. The average next day close was down 3%. I want you to really focus on these numbers right here because I'm going to compare those to the ones that beat top and bottom line that I actually liked, that had strong relative strength. So you kind of got those Actually, I can probably just copy. And then up here, well, this is it right here. I'll just throw them in here. Um, and I'll just paste values. Otherwise, it'll be a whole mess up. But look at the differences here. So this is the top line and bottom line beats of the companies that had great relative strength. Here was the performance though of the ones that beat top and bottom line that did not have good relative strength. I mean, this is pretty significant. This is over 4% average difference in how these stocks perform at the opening bell the next day. And by the close, it's more than six and a half percent difference. And the AD line, what actually happens and transpires during the day, the difference is almost three percentage points from opening bell to closing bell. The average, the average of these 65 versus the average of the other, or not 65, uh, these were 43 of these that beat top and bottom line. <clears throat> and then these, there were 23 of the negative or poor relative strength. There were 23 of those that beat top and bottom line. But you can see the, the way they perform. They're completely different on average. Um, so let's do the same thing with the next one. I'm going to do the same thing here with the mixed group. So with the mixed group, you can see we were down. You know, I went over these numbers, but we were down a little bit. But what happened on the mixed numbers with the negatives?
Well, these, I mean, it's kind of weird. But on the negative, if I take that and copy it, and then we come up here. All right. So these actually, it's kind of weird. They went the other way. So it's like, you know, the ones that are mixed, I don't know. I guess there's not really a whole, I guess there's not a whole lot of difference if you're, if you issue a mixed, I guess it doesn't matter whether you have strong or weak relative performance because these tend to, to flip and go the other way. Um, now we did have one really big one here. I don't know. Maybe I, we can, might might behoove me to take out the best and the worst, and maybe look at it if we take out the best and the worst. I didn't. Literally, I was wrapping this up as we were getting prepared for the uh, event, so I didn't really have time. Um, and then the last one I wanted to do is show you was okay. If, so if we missed on top and bottom line, here were the averages. So we'll copy that. And we'll compare that to the ones that missed when we had strong relative strength. All right. Um, and so this one, maybe a little bit worse on the opening gap. Not a whole lot. Well, one and a half percent, close to one and a half percent worse. But you can see the difference, though. I mean, if you're missing or you're, um, you have mixed results, you're not going to do as well. One of the things I wanted to kind of start to prove is that you can, you could make money, I guess, by holding these, you know, the strong relative strength performers. If you had a basket of them, it looks like you do okay. Now you can always be just unlucky. And actually that one looks really weird. Okay, that was there's an error there. Um, I'm going to try and correct that right here. So wait one second. So SSTK is the one that looks like it's messed up. So let's take a look at this going back. Would have been 424 would have been the prior close. I did not have a chance to look at this for any error, so. Um, sorry about that, but let me see if I can correct it here. So 2023, 04, 24. And that is 67. So it must have been the next day that got messed up here. All right, so the next day it opened at 70.08 and closed at 69.04. All right, so that was kind of a weird one. So that definitely changed, and I'm sure that's going to change our numbers a little bit here. Um, really, actually, not a whole lot. Did come down, but I guess because we have so many companies. It uh, just came down by less than 1%. So we're still seeing a pretty significant difference. Now it's down to about 2.5% at the opening gap. But again, that's an average. That's an average against all these stocks, which uh, you know, I don't see any, I didn't see anything else that was crazy. Let's see if this one, 33%. Actually, I think PI did actually drop like that. But I'm just double checking it. Yeah, PI did have a huge drop after earnings. Um, FRC, I know, did. That's uh, that's the uh, one of the smaller or regional banks that was crushed during the bank crisis. Um, yeah, I think all these other ones, yeah, they all look pretty good. So anyway. My point is that when we break these down, 
there's definitely a discernible difference between whether or not a company goes into, you know, when they beat top and bottom line, it matters whether they are strong going into earnings or whether they're weak, at least based on last month's results. And we're going to, I'm going to keep track of this every month. So next week, when we do this again, I will once again have, you know, probably a similar number of companies that are, you know, shown from a relative strength and relative weakness perspective. So the positives and the negatives, and then we'll go from there. Um, but I, I think this is, uh, I think this is a very useful exercise based on this to start to maybe gain better expectations going into earnings as to what your companies might or might not be faced with um, based on, you know, number one, if they beat top and bottom line, and then, um, you know, and in, in which uh, relative strength camp they live in, the strong or the weak. So that's kind of what I wanted to show you. Now, this spreadsheet, again, I've been going through it and it might probably making your head dizzy. Um, I'm a Excel nut, so I love this kind of stuff. But I know a lot of folks are much more visual with graphs and things like that rather than an Excel spreadsheet. But for those of you who do want this data, um, and if you are an annual member, um, you can, uh, you'll can you be able to go into our website and be able to download this data right into uh, your own computer and uh, manipulate manipulate the data however you like. And you could even take it out further. You know, I've gone out five days and 10 days. What happened a month later or two months later? I didn't, I haven't gone back to look at that yet. Uh, so that might be a little bit more um, uh, detail that you might want to take a look at. All right, so that was essentially what I wanted to show you on this spreadsheet. I thought it was pretty cool, especially the companies that beat both top and bottom line, depending on whether or not they were in the uh, strong relative strength camp or the weak relative strength camp. And again, I think averaging two and a half percent on the gaps, I think is a pretty substantial number considering how many companies were included. All right, so let me bring back up because I wanted to show you a couple other things before we wrap up um, today. Hey, Tom. Yes. A few people are asking, you know, because, because it requires an annual membership, to get these spreadsheets like all, and that there'll be more of these over the next week or two. Yes. I just wanted to mention to people, if you can just pull up real quickly on our site, there is a webinar special where you get a bonus month if you sign up for an annual membership. So you get 13 months, you know, for the, for the regular price. It's just the way to go. If you're interested, this would be a great time to do because you're going to get the spreadsheet tonight. Tomorrow night, we got max pain. We've got, ETFs on Wednesday. Next Monday is the actual, not sneak preview, but actual event covering earnings where there'll be more of this. So if you're going to get involved with us, you want to take out an annual membership, this is the time to do it. It's just a great deal. So I just want to point that out. Yeah. And I would say, I mean, I don't know the exact number, but I would say it's somewhere between 80 and 90% of our members are annual members. Um, it just makes sense yeah. if you like yeah. our service. You know, the the average monthly rate, if you take 997 divided into 13 plus a 30 day free trial, I mean, 14 months in the 997, our monthly average monthly is 147. You'll be up to 997 after your first six or seven months. So, I mean, here you can get 14 months with the 30 day trial for 997. So, uh, but that's on our uh, website. So if you go to earningsbeats.com, if you are interested, uh, just click on that webinar special. We've got a number of webinars. I don't know, John, how long this webinar special will go, but we've had, uh, we've got probably another week's worth of uh, solid webinars. So I'm assuming we'll have this up for a little while. So maybe the best thing to do is to take out a 30 day trial and just check out our service. And then if over the course of the next week or so, you like what we do, uh, it would be a great opportunity to jump in and take advantage of the special deal. All right, um, I'm gonna now go into companies that I think have produced some pretty solid reports so far in this uh, earnings season. I don't have the actual earnings data right with me. I just have the charts. Um, but these are companies, all of these companies did beat top and bottom line estimates. So I can tell you that much. Um, Helen of Troy, H-E-L-E, -E, big gap up. You can see that volume there, the spike. 
right now, I, you know, if we lose 126, we got a little bit of support just below 125. If that fails, then I think we could go down to the gap support and or the 20 day EMA. Um, so you might want to, you know, if you are in this one or getting in this one, you might want to think about uh, keeping some powder dry and maybe uh, trying to get in on any further weakness. You know, if we do see the market pull back and we see uh, HELE take any kind of a dip, um, it wouldn't scare me. It actually would make me feel pretty good about the reward to risk the further it drops. Another one that I thought looked really good was AEHR. Here you can see the volume absolutely soaring with this earnings report. Huge move up, big gap up. Uh, we had gone sideways for a while. We really hadn't gone far from back where we were in January on AEHR, and this is in the semiconductor space. But with earnings, you can see that that relative strength picked up, the volume was strong, and we know that semiconductors have been very strong relative to the S&P 500. So here's a stock that's showing leadership within one of the strongest areas of the market. So right now it's 52.17. It gapped up though to almost 45 after its earnings. So anything close to gap support um, down the road would be a great entry point into AEHR. Delta Airlines, DAL. This is one I was talking about right before they reported. And I said, I think they're going to have great numbers. And I think it was, I think I had a show that day and it was showing a, a, a pre-market move to the upside. And I said, this could be one of those situations where you buy on rumor. Here it is. You know, great news is coming. Wall Street's in ahead of everybody else and then sell on news. So we got the gap up. And since then, we've been pulling back. Um, now, I don't believe the run's over to the upside, but could we pull back a little bit further? Sure. Um, again, when you get this kind of a move prior to earnings and then you get the actual news to come out, it's not surprising. I would not be chasing. Um, a stock like Delta that's been going up, 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 and they come out with earnings and they gap up. I think jumping in at that point is taking an inordinate amount of risk. Um, it could still go higher. I'm not saying it's not going to go higher. It's just, again, you have to evaluate the risk you want to take on a stock. And so when I get a big move like this and a gap up with earnings, buying is the last thing coming to my mind. Um now, liking the stock, though, and putting it on a strong, some kind of, you know, we have it on our strong earnings chart list. You know, you want it on a watch list because if it pulls back and tests the 20 day, or maybe it goes through a period of moving lower five, six days in a row, we have a downtrend reversal scan that could pick it up later. There will be times when we can get into a stock like Delta. It's just, I don't want to be chasing it after earnings, after it's already run from $32, $33 up to 50 in a couple of months, I don't think jumping in uh, after that gap up is a very good idea. Uh, Pepsi, I think this is another one, had a pretty good report. We got the nice gap up here. Pepsi relative to the soft drink index has been very strong over the last four or five months. So good earnings, it gapped up, it's pulled back. It's still going sideways a little bit, but that AD line looks good. I think a, uh, Pepsi eventually takes out this these recent highs and, and makes a run for 195. And then the last one I have for you on the long side, strong earnings so far, uh, JP Morgan, AD line. I mean, of all the banks, you know, some of the banks have been weak. Many of the banks have been weak. Many of the financial stocks have been weak. JP Morgan, do not include that as one of those. JP Morgan's been very strong. It is a leader among the banks. I would have been really worried about the banks if JP Morgan had missed. Because if you got your leaders missing, that can really present some problems for the rest of the group. But in this case, JP Morgan blew out numbers. I was a little surprised. I mean, you know, we've got an inverted yield curve that tends to affect banks more than any other area of the market. Um, I will say, though, that because the 10 year Treasury yield has been rising, the uh, um, bank's uh, revenues have been impacted positively. It's just the other side, the other side of the balance sheet. Because the Fed's been raising Fed funds rate, that's the rate at which banks borrow. And so their borrowing costs go up if they're borrowing. Um, anyway, and it can it usually sends deposits higher. So if customer deposits, that's a borrowing on a bank. That's you know, a lot of people get that kind of confused. But on a bank, cash, you know, these deposit accounts are a liability. They're not an asset. If you and I own cash, that's a good thing. But a bank that has 
the cash coming in from customers, they owe that money to the customers. So it's a liability. And so if rates start to go up on deposit accounts because of the higher Fed funds rate, that can negatively impact some banks' earnings. Anyway, JP Morgan seemed to be immune to all that. Big, big numbers, and they broke out again today. I mean, just really good looking chart here on JP Morgan. All right, a couple of earnings that have come out that I just kind of like looked at it and went, ooh. Uh, first one, I see a head and shoulders breakdown here on uh, Progressive. It had a nice little uptrend. Here was a neckline, the head. Here's the right side of a neckline. And there's the breakdown on massive volume. We've come back up. I think it's probably going to be a head fake. I would be surprised if Progressive is able to pierce gap resistance at 122.50 up to the 20-day at 127.50. I don't like to short in uh, bull markets and bull market advances. But if I was going to short, it would be a company like this. 122.50 to 127.50, I think is key resistance on PGR. Another stock that did not like the earnings report so far, State Street. Um, you can see State Street, big, big gap down. Um, I will say on these weak earnings, I did not look to see whether they beat top or bottom line. So these two, PGR and STT, I can't say for sure whether they beat. What I can say is that the market didn't like the report. In the case of ST, STT, we haven't broken down yet. So I won't rule out hope here for this one, but 65 to 66, this area really needs to hold as support. All right, final thing I wanted to go over tonight in this uh, was just a quick peek ahead. I wanted to look at some companies that were gonna be coming up later this week that I think are at least worthy of consideration um, in terms of whether or not you hold or whether you sell heading into earnings. It's really based on what I was just talking about on the Excel spreadsheet, strong relative strength versus weak relative strength. So let me give you a handful of each um, going into this week. Um, so SLG, that'll be your first one. This is SL Green Realty. You can see the stock started to make a move. Real estate was really weak for a while, but the last couple of months, we've seen LA, or excuse me, SL Green taking off. We had a double bottom on the relative strength. And now for the last two months, maybe a little over two months, we've been trending higher. I don't know if this lasts. And this is one of those, this is one of those relative strength charts where I think you could look at it and come up with bullish thoughts or bearish thoughts. Because if you look back, you'll see in September, uh, November, February, we had these declining relative highs. And the one we have right now is still below those. So I can get it if somebody looks at this and says, no, nah, I'm not sure that relative strength is really good just yet. Uh, maybe it's a little premature. So again, this is where judgment comes on, very subjective. Some like JP Morgan look awesome. Others like SLG. You know, I like the fact that we're starting to strengthen here and the volume is starting to pick up. I want to see that AD line continue to move higher. Those are things that I would continue to watch. AN, this is Auto Nation. I mean, this one is off the charts. Uh, no, well, almost, no pun intended. AD line up near a high. Look at this, looks a lot like the um, Delta Airlines chart, where it's just going up every day heading into earnings. So this is one where I wouldn't be surprised if we had some great numbers and we gap up and then maybe the sell on the news kicks in. But I do think we're going to have some big numbers here, positive numbers on AutoNation. And you can see it's just absolutely exploding versus the, its relative or its uh, specialty retail peers. Um, specialty retail has been okay versus the S&P going sideways the last few months. So pretty strong stock, though, within this area. So I would expect some good numbers. Um, Blackstone, BX. You can see on a technical or technical basis, we're right up against some key resistance uh, at 107, 108, somewhere in there. So maybe we pause here, but the AD line looks good. Relative strength, you can see, is at about a, looks like maybe uh, eight month relative high, eight to nine months. So pretty strong stock, even though it's within a group that's not very strong. Asset managers have not been a great area versus the S&P 500. 
but Blackstone has been a, a really strong performer. So I'd look for some good numbers there. ISRG, this is a really good looking chart. Um, this is one that we had put out, I think last weekend as a portfolio or a model trade setup right on that 20 day test. And you can see it just exploded right off of that. Look at the AD line. I mean, it's almost perfection going up almost every day. Relative strength, ISRG very strong relative to medical equipment stocks. So not much to dislike here. I would really be surprised if ISRG didn't post some good numbers. Um, all right, now how about the ones that don't look so good going in? Well, first I'm going to point out is Martin Transport. It's not really in a downtrend on its absolute price chart. It's been going sideways. But look at that relative strength versus the truckers. Just horrible, horrible. We're at a 52-week low relative to its peers. Don't be surprised if we see some poor results here. KNX, this is also in that trucking area. Sideways move relative to the trucking stocks, getting hit hard. So these are two trucking stocks that are not performing very well. How about NOK? This is uh, Nokia. Well, it's now trading down under $3.90. So it's not a stock that we generally will focus on here at Earnings Beats because we tend to stick with stocks that are at least $5. But mention it anyway, volume has been strong. It's been going down. Look at this relative weakness. It's just been a nightmare for a long time. It's in a group that's near 52-week low, and it's been performing as one of the worst performers within this group. So... If you're expecting really good numbers, um, that's opposite of what Wall Street is expecting. And then we've got, uh, I'll give you two more IPG. This is Interpublic Group of Companies. It's going up. It's got a decent chart to the upside. AD line looks pretty good. So on the one hand, I could say the stock looks great, but the media stocks have been doing really well. And you can see IPG relative to the media stocks is actually at about an eight or nine month relative low. So I'm a little concerned going into earnings because of that. Um, but everything else looks good. If they can beat and get a breakout, maybe this, you know, they can change the uh, relative strength outlook. But right now it concerns me. And then the last one I have for you tonight, NTRS. This is uh, Northern Trust. Again, another financial stock asset manager. AD line lo doesn't look too bad, especially for a stock that's been going down most of 2023. But the volume trends are bad. And then you've got relative strength, horrible. You know, the AD line, I, I like to think of that as maybe some accumulation taking place. But if you think, just using common sense, it's hard to really just hone in on the AD line and say NTRS is being accumulated when you look and you see such horrible relative strength. I mean, it's one of the worst stocks in one of the worst areas of the market. So how... How does that work? How do you have a stock that's such a poor performer that's being accumulated? It doesn't even make sense. Obviously, if a stock's being accumulated, there's a lot of shares being bought. So you would think there's going to be some strength somewhere, but we're not seeing that here on the NTRS chart, which is why the AD line, like many technical indicators, is a secondary indicator. You need corroborating evidence before thinking a stock is bullish and you want to buy or thinking a stock's bearish and you want to short or sell. Um, NTRS, not a bad AD line, but there's nothing else to go with it. And so for that reason, I'd be a little nervous going into its earnings report this week. All right. Um, that is essentially what I wanted to go over. I do just want to remind you all um, that we do have a lot of members or member events coming up. And uh, if you try us, you know, pick up a 30-day free trial, you've got our portfolio. Um, draft, our ETF portfolio draft coming up. Actually, there may be a change to that. Um, you know, normally we have that on our schedule right now for Wednesday. I'm kind of thinking in my mind, we might want to push that back. We'll probably, we'll get out of the ETFs that we're in, but with everything going on in the market, maybe we wait a little bit for uh, buying into the model ETF portfolio, but I'll, we'll be getting back to everyone on that one. I just want to mention it while I'm thinking about it. Tomorrow though, Max Payne, that's a member event. You can come in and join us uh, using your 30-day free trial. Next Monday, or I think it's next Monday, is the Q1 earnings where we're going to lay out those 100 or 120 stocks for you. 
um, as earnings season starts to pick up, I'm going to give you a lot more companies to be thinking about going into earnings. You know, if you want to hold these stocks into earnings, that's completely up to you. Obviously, the risk and, and the reward potential reward both go up with an earnings report. I mean, anything can happen. But I do think you can get the odds on your side by looking at relative strength based on what I went over earlier tonight with that Excel spreadsheet. Um, and again, with this webinar special, anybody who wants to sign up for an annual membership, $997, I promise you, if you had been a member for the last year, you would certainly want to be a member again for the next year because we have been on fire in terms of our overall market guidance. I think our research has been on point. Our chart list, our portfolios, I think have done fairly well. Some of the stock portfolios, a little um, iffy a uh, couple of the quarters, but for the most part, the model ETF portfolio has been on fire. Um, we do a lot of research for our members. We share it uh, with everyone. And uh, so hopefully you'll take us up on our special. Either sign up for a 30-day free trial and check us out, or uh, just jump right in on that annual special and start saving a lot of money. Uh, but that's it for me. I don't hey, know if you hey, have Tom, anything to add, John. Yeah, you, you have, have questions. Just two biggies. Uh, you can't escape these two. Okay. Uh, Wednesday, Tesla and Netflix. Oh, yeah. Um, well, I like both of them. I like Tesla better. Um, I just, I'm a little concerned about the overall market, but if we pull up the relative strength, there's no doubt. I mean, look at Tesla relative to the auto group. Look at autos strengthening versus the S&P 500. So you've got a strengthening group and you've got, in my opinion, the best stock within the group. Um, and I'm not talking about recent performance because I could go Rivian. I could do some others that have done really well. But Tesla is uh, the 800-pound the gorilla in the group. Uh, the AD line looks great. Relative strength is superb. I think they are going to report a really big number. The question is, we've gone from 150 to 290 in two and a half months. So the big question is, is it already built in? And that's always the tough question to answer. I suspect we're going to get a good, re a good report and a gap up with Tesla. But after that, I don't know. It could be a sell on the news kind of thing. Now, Netflix. Netflix has improved. Here you can see the relative strength versus the internet. I love the internet stock, so I love the space. I think there are others within the internet space that look better than Netflix, but I do like Netflix, and I think they're going to come out with a decent report as well. Anything else? Let's wrap up on that. All right. I appreciate everybody tuning in. You're going to want to join us next, uh, next Monday for the Q1 earnings. Uh, I will be going through a lot of companies, and I think you'll really enjoy looking at all the charts and all. So make sure you tune in to us next Monday and, of course, all the other events as well. We've got, I want to announce, because there's probably a lot of you that are in, uh, that come in for our Trading Places live shows um, at 8 a, or excuse me, at 9 a.m. Eastern, Monday through Thursday. Earn, um, stock charts went through some changes on Tuesdays and Thursdays where they were no longer broadcasting our shows at 9 a.m. Uh, so we are going to start broadcasting those right here at Earnings Beats. Um, if you come in at nine o'clock and you're on our website, you can go right in here to Trading Places Live and you'll be able to click um, on the video when it's live so you can view it. Um, so just make sure that you have this bookmark. This is, you don't have to be a member. Uh, this is free. So bookmark this, this page, the Trading Places Live. And at 9 a.m. Monday through Thursday, you can click and come in. Now we have a live trading room that we started last Wednesday at 10 a.m. We will be having that this week as well. But the Thursday show at 9 a.m. Um, is going to be canceled because I'm actually going to be traveling out of town uh, that day. So we're not going to be able to do a show Thursday morning, but we'll do, we did one this morning. We'll have one tomorrow. And again, it's going to be at earnings beats, not at stock charts. Um, 9 a.m., just come in here to this Trading Places Live and click, come on in. Uh, Wednesday, we will also have a, a show at 9 a.m. and then we'll follow it up with the live trading room at 10 a.m. And that's for members. The live trading room at 10 a.m. is for members. So again, that 30-day trial or the annual membership gets you in to our live trading uh, room on Wednesday as well. Anyway, a lot to go over. And for you, for the members, we will, I'll, I'll be sending out some of the changes that are going to be happening at Earnings Beat. So I'm going to try and have that out tomorrow for you so you can take a look at it. And uh, hopefully get ready and adjust to some of the changes that are coming. I think most of the changes are going to be really good. I think you'll enjoy them. 
Anyway, everybody have a great evening. Thanks for tuning in. And I'll be back tomorrow morning for uh, Trading Places Live at 9 a.m. Have a great night, everybody. Happy trading.